So guys, what you didn't know about the Red Bull landing? It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, so let's talk about the challenges of the winds on this building. This building was designed to be the shape of a boat from the ocean or from the shore. It would look like a giant sailboat. Guess what? This building is an actual airfoil sail of a sailboat on one side. Anything I've ever landed in my life never did what the wind does on the side of a 600 foot tall building shaped like a sail. I guess the building's way higher than 600, but the pad is at 600 in the middle of an airfoil. And if you think that might wreak havoc, it did. It was mind blowing. And we had to keep lowering the wind limits. Let me tell you how crazy this is. The wind comes off the ocean and it comes off a pretty good breeze. Every night we'd get up there 4 a.m. in the morning and we'd measure the winds and try and track where it's coming and where it was going. For several days, we're like, what in the world is going on? It was so hard to predict. We finally figured it out. And I want to give you a couple examples. Imagine the shape of this sail on one side of the building, but the wind's coming from the backside 90 degrees to the sail and the helipad is here. That wind, if it was 90 degrees to that backside, it would come around the building and the airfoil would hook it and drag it into that negative pressure zone on the back, pull it directly to the helipad on the other side, which meant the wind was coming two directions to the pad. And at the center of the pad, it would go straight up some days, and some days it would swirl and roll down and then out. So some days you had a heavy, massive sinker on both sides of that pad, and other days, pushers that lifted you right up. And I'm talking 10, 15 feet, just bolt you up into the air. Imagine if the wind's coming two directions. If you're trying to approach your landing tailwind, even if the headwind is coming the other way, the pad was the turning point. Tailwind, tailwind. As soon as the sun come up, we knew we'd between 30 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on the day. The sun would heat that super desert, get a mass of air movement going on, and all of a sudden the wind would switch from the ocean and it turn around and go to the ocean, right with that building in the middle of the two zones. Coming from the other way, it would do something different. The wind would come at the building from a direct crosswind, hit the building and split and go two directions. Well, now you can get a headwind off the helipad, but you got a tailwind off the other side. So that's still landable. But the problem is the wind, when it still hit that building, would go different directions up and down. And all of this would happen. The wind would swing from ocean to desert in that morning window. And sometimes we had under a minute where the wind would start to shift direction and it would actually be what we have to have the direction of the water. So we had to try and time the wind coming down the beach. Uh, 8.5. Wow. So that's the central. 7.7. 7. Okay, I'm gonna three. rotate it. 9, 11, 12, 12.5, 13. Stop. That's 25 degrees from the central. 1, 4. That's 40. One, two. Good. Come back. Okay, stop. One, four. That's 25. One, four. That's again the central. 9.8. Eight. Okay, it's right there. Yeah. Right there. The day of the event, we decided we're going to get up in the morning. We're going to launch the plane right as the sun creeps up. Put on a bunch of fuel and let it circle. So right now, He's doing just a flyby. He's gonna come back around and get a sight picture of what it looks like. Get his angle of approach. We need the wind to pick up. We had it 
up to about nine knots while he was on his way and then it just died zero and it would just sit out there for an hour plus circling 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 with me standing on the helipad hoping for the wind to swing and catch it on its 180 degree rotation with the sun the day we went for the attempt the wind was high enough the little bit on the high side closer to the 20 range we wanted to be under 20. absolutely fine we needed to catch it on the mid swing get a nice steady wind that was a headwind on one direction in and a headwind on a go around and that was the goal well we came in on that day and everything was lining up perfect the planes are ready helicopters are flying multiple drones in the air the boats are in the water the beach has been cleared we literally had caterpillars pushing and, and grading the beach. Scuba divers are ready. Fire departments are ready. The base of the building is cleared. Everyone's gone. We have one day to do this event. That is all that's permitted. That's all we're authorized. It's the only day we got. And we have a window that tends to be between one and two minutes and 15 minutes where that wind makes its rotation and gets in line before it swings the other way. We had Luke in the air, and while the wind was still making its rounds, he was doing just simple flybys. And the decision is, we are not landing. This is a flyby 10 feet above the pad, sight picture, cruise by, make sure the helicopters are in a good place, cameras are in a good place, simulating an approach, but not on the backside of the power curve, which means the plane's flat. He's not trying to land. He's not high angle of attack. Before he gets to the pad, I want you to listen to the motor. The plane's flat, it's smooth, it's stable, everything's perfect. And all of a sudden you hear full power, and the wind did something crazy. On the pad, one side of the helipad, the wind went up. The other side of the helipad, the wind went down. And the plane got pushed from 10 feet up after full throttle and well above a stall because he wasn't landing and he gets pushed towards the pad. This plane comes down, hits the pad on its side so hard that the tire comes all the way up. I believe it hit the rim. The wind literally stuffed him. Normally that wind can go any direction, but continue downward. On this approach, that wind could be going straight down and there's no earth to make it go one way or the other. So it can take you under the helipad and you will crash right into the bottom. Well, that's why he was flying so high. He still got stuffed. And if he'd been trying to land, we'd have had a really bad situation on our, on our hands. That helipad did something unexpected that we hadn't seen in two weeks of testing. And it got us on a flyby. The event was canceled right there. I looked to the Red Bull team. Okay, we're canceled. One of their other Red Bull guys said, absolutely, I agree. We're grounded. Nobody said, are you sure? Can we try again? How about this? How about that? Nope, done. They meant it, they backed it, and we pulled it. That was a long day. That was a hard day. What was hard is just knowing that there were a lot of people wanted to see this happen, years of effort, and just feeling bad, worrying that someone could get hurt, but it didn't matter. The event's off. Send all the helicopters away, tell the boats to get out of the water, send the fire department home, open the beaches, we're done. There is no event. We got talking afterwards and uh, Red Bull said, Mike, Luke, team, we don't have a permit for tomorrow. We have no beaches cleared. We have no boats, no helicopters, no anything. It was a one and done. We have no approval from the government, no approval from the hotel. It's over. There is no tomorrow. When we canceled, it's canceled, done. And they said, if you could change the parameters and if the wind did the right thing, would you want to try again? 
Luke is <laughs> stud. Yes. <laughs> I don't mind to go around squishing a tire. Let's tighten up the parameters and do it again. He was all in. And they asked me, Mike, what do you think? If we go pull this off and we change those parameters, are you on? I said, yeah. Give us seven to 15 right down the pipe. Great. But unfortunately, the next day is scheduled to be three to eight knots. And we're hoping it's above seven during the swing. I said the likelihood of us hitting that is so slim on a day that's forecast to have almost no wind. And they said, we're willing to give it another shot and hold firm to those stipulations on the wind. And we'll do it one more time. They spent the entire afternoon and all day rescheduling another day. They gave us word that night that they got all the approvals. We'd get up the next morning and try it. We got up that morning for sunrise. We got ready. Luke got airborne. We watched the wind. Two knots, three knots, two knots, four knots, three knots. Waiting for it to swing. Luke's just out there circling on the approach end. And then the wind picked up and I watched it go five, six, seven, eight, seven, 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 eight, seven, seven. And I'm watching Luke come around and that wind was making a abnormally faster rotation. It was just kind of cruising around that building. I, I don't think we had but a couple minutes of the total time that wind swung around that building. And I called out Luke, I looked out off that building and I watched him making that turn. And it looked like he was about ready to start a whole nother rotation. Well, if he makes one more rotation, we're gonna get two more minutes. And I don't know if we have that big of a window and that was the actual facts. We didn't have time for him to make another turn. He needed to make a decision. It's not on me to say, Luke, you need to land. I don't want that responsibility. My job was to just say, what are the winds? And in my mind, I'm like, this is the smoothest, perfect seven we have had since we've been here. Seven, steady. And I watched him turn straight to the pad and start flying in. And I pulled up my radar gun and pointed it at him, just like I had done over and over and over again on a AstroTurf runway at a airport nearby with a circle on it, I started counting down his airspeed. 28, 28, 28. This was the first and only approach to land attempt of our entire trip. And when he was 10 feet away, I was jumping up and down inside because I knew his ground speed and that he would stop 75% of the way across that pad. And I knew it 100% sure because I had a log of all his touchdowns at every single speed onto a circle on an AstroTurf runway. And I have never been more excited in my life when I started yelling and jumping up and down and I'm holding this radio and listening to him say, we made history. We made history, man, we made history. <laughs> Luke had done something amazing and I was so excited to be a part of it and watch him come to a perfect stop and absolutely nail the landing where we wanted him right between the green arc and the end of the pad, right in the center of that. And for those of you who don't really realize, he actually has to push forward on the stick to not crash that tail in. If you see a lot of planes, they come in and land, that tail is gonna hit. He pushed forward on the stick, he hit the spot, hit the brakes, lifted the tail, Luke, you are a machine. This is unbelievable. So guys, what you didn't know about the Red Bull landing? There was one attempt on one day. The other video of him rocking his wing and moving, that was not a landing. That was a setup for a camera day that canceled the event. So, unbelievable. My guess is guys, that is the first time and the last time anyone will ever land a plane on the Burj Al Arab. And it was perfect. When his wheels touched the ground, guys, look at the video. 
his wheels touched, he came to a stop. We're cheering, no editing, no adding in clips of wind socks. The wind went done. The total time of recorded on a wind meter wind that was in the window for us to hit was one minute, one minute. If he had made one more lap, the wind would have gone to zero. That event would have never happened. So we had a one minute window, Luke, you stud, you nailed it. Now, getting off the building, guys, we, we had no concerns. You just point it to the wind and go. And that plane, a little bit of nitrous, it get off that helipad, no problem, before reaching the end without an ounce of wind. So our celebration on top was big. And then the launch off the building was just, I don't know, dessert. Ready? All right, guys. Three, two, one. Bullseye. He was airborne before the ramp at the end and then dove off for fun. And he put on a show. I've seen some pretty amazing air shows in my life. <laughs> Oshkosh, everything. They're unbelievable. Something about a cub doing loops and rolls and smoke and slide slips across this building after so much work. And quite frankly, one of the hardest, most disappointing days prior made that little single lightweight carbon cub air show on the edge of the building in Dubai over the ocean with crowds watching. It was one of the greatest air shows I've ever seen in my life. I'm lucky to be a part of it, so Red Bull. Thank you for asking me to build a plane when I really didn't have time to stop my other builds. I'm so happy I did. And to get out there and spend a great time with Luke. Luke, I love you. Um, you're just a stud. You're part of my family now forever. It was a great event. So guys, I hope you liked hearing a little bit of the backstory. This was a lot harder than you may think. There's a lot of planes that can land in little teeny spaces, but they don't have wind going through the earth or coming up through the earth or stuffing them or potentially sticking them into the building. And the best pilots I know that we talked to said, I don't know if I'd even want to try. Those are the ones who truly understand how hard it is to hit a circle in midair with no ground visual reference and wind passing through your approach corridor in many different directions. This short little landing took a lot of work. We're so excited we were able to pull it off. I love you guys. We'll see you next time. I have a bunch of planes I'm working on right now. I'm gonna do a video about all the planes I'm working on. The planes to come, some I'll tell you in detail, some I'll just give you hints. But I have a lot of planes to build, a house to finish, a family to see, I'm done for now. Thank you guys. Love you guys for following along. You know the drill. Back to work.